let's just rewind for a second, because if you recall, right at the start of the lesson, I said, look, this mathematical thinking idea, it's not just about saying, hey, there are numbers, but it's about asking questions of those numbers, trying to see are there patterns in those numbers and why those patterns are the way they are. Patterns are everywhere and they're beautiful. One of the most beautiful ones you can see is right over there on the uh, left of the room. There's some, you can see a triangle shape. I encourage you, some of you, you can see this one as well. It's a bigger one. Uh, there's this interesting shape going on here and it's built with numbers. I encourage you at the end or anytime you're in this room, just go have a closer look at these posters and see what's going on. I'm going to show you a pattern here. First. We did Pascal triangles last year, and I made one about twice the size of my book. Brilliant, yes. Pascal triangle, loads of fun things. This, by the way, if you um, come up really close, you'll see there are tiny, tiny numbers in there, and you'll see Pascal triangle in there. But this is clearly something else going on. So how can we understand it? Why is it that when I add odd numbers and I put them in order, I end up with squares? What? Why did they do that? Okay. Now. I asked you want to draw a diagram. Here's sort of a general lesson for you. Diagrams are super useful. Diagrams are your friend. Um, diagrams actually are like a pair of glasses. They help you see things that you otherwise cannot see or can't imagine. Okay? So we're going to use this diagram here, this bunch of squares that you've drawn. And I'm going to show you with the, with the help of my friend, the counting stones over here, why it is that this takes place. Okay? Now, here's the trick though. Instead of arranging them, you remember we did it in um, pairs of rows like this, okay? It's kind of a bit of a pain having an odd number and having an odd one out. But actually, that odd one out is really, really useful. I don't, I don't think, oh, I'm the odd one out, that's a bit of a pain. But the odd one out is powerful. Watch. When you got an even set of numbers, I'll just quickly draw this. They exactly match up. There's six, and you can see they match up, right? If I put another one on, you get this kind of situation. But what if I don't want two rows? What if I want something else? What if maybe I want something like two arms? You remember that odd one out that we said, oh, that looks a bit funny there? The odd one out is what makes the two arms of this kind of like sort of junction here, of this L, it makes it work. The odd one out is needed, otherwise you don't get the shape. I wonder if anyone's cogs are turning up here and are seeing what we can do with this thing. Watch. You remember how we were writing numbers here? I'm going to do the same thing we did here, but I'm going to do it visually. And I'd love, if you've got two colours there, it would be outstanding for you to follow along with me. Okay. One. That was a bit boring. That's fine. There's one. Right there. There's my first counting stone. Okay. Now, when I add three on, I'm going to put the counting stones in, but I'm going to use the superpower of odd numbers, which is that they can make, oops, it is, they can make these L shapes in here. Can you see? There's an L shape I can fit around using my three, a bit like Tetris, right? And fit it around the one. Can you see? Watch. Up over here. One, two, three. Do you see it? Look, that's how that three, it kind of filled in this square. In fact, this square up here is exactly what we drew over here, right? What's the next number? That five, that can fill around the edges as well. I'm going to use my next color. So if you want to go back, one, two, three, four, five. So you see, this idea of mathematical thinking is to say nothing is a coincidence, right? There's always something going on here. I can keep going, right? I can say the next one, this is the last one I drew up there. When I add on seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see, the odd numbers have their own kind of beauty, their own kind of um, shape to them. Right? Let's finish off this square. Right? You can now see the next number, without having to go through adding these all over again, is going to be 5 times 5. Let's finish this and then I'll dismiss you. Okay? So that means I've got... This square here, which is now 5 by 5, which is? 5 by 5? 25. 25, fantastic. The last one that we're going to draw today, and then I'm going to ask you to pack up, is the last of these odd numbers, which I think for us is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? There's that last odd number that fits. And now I have my big square, 36. 